and uh, Rosemary, uh, please uh, continue being with us uh, on Teams, because now we have a few questions. Uh, and uh, first I have to ask Olli, have we had any questions from the audience? Yes. Not yet. Then I'll start with this one. Yes, please use the, the microphone. The European Commission, in their COVID response, they talk about a need for shortening and strengthening the supply chains. How has COVID-19 affected the global supply chains in your mind? Matti, would you like to start? Well, um, I think that that is a good good question. And if we, if we consider, for example, these uh, new investment projects that we are preparing, uh, uh, this, this kind of like a European uh, uh, lithium ion battery value chain, I think that the kind of like a key topic there is to, to make as robust uh, value, value, value chain and uh, supply chain as possible, because basically, uh, this, this pandemic has been a clear, clear example that, uh, that, that there are real risks with, with long, uh, and, uh, long value chains uh, and, and, and I think that that is, that is something that we have witnessed already. Yeah. What about you Kai? And I agree tech. totally what Matti says that what I have been also seeing that it's becoming more local. So more local focused, everything has to be taken more local and that's a clear signal. Would you like to add something, Rosemary? Uh, no, I can just agree to what the gentleman said here. Mm. Thank you. There was a lot of concern about that last spring, uh, but how does it look now when you're looking ahead, maybe one year? How, what, what are you seeing? What kind of development? <coughs> that was a quite <laughs> big question. Yeah. So I would say that If you think, of, think from the metal point of view and sustainability point of view, I think that the precious metals are absolutely on the top of the game still. Mm. And uh, rare earth metals are still there. It's everything about shortening the, the, all the lines, supply lines. And I think that the sustainability is something that we cannot afford to lose. Mm. Yeah, I think that there are, there are many, many uh, uh, big... Uh, kind of like a mega trends now now uh, out there which uh, affect the, the business environment and obviously uh, this, this COVID-19 is only only one of those uh, for, for the uh, mining industry I think that the, the also the kind of like a geopolitical tension that we are witnessing uh, has also its uh, impact and uh, and and uh, and uh, also also uh, the, the kind of like a more broader uh, economic uh, uncertainty so so this is uh, something that is really difficult now to forecast that uh, where where things go but on the other hand uh, for example in our operations this this uh, battery battery development is something that is uh, it is going going forward even even stronger and uh, speedier as was forecasted so so i think that uh, that that uh, uh, that is something that will not be affected of of this crisis rosemary would you like to add? Yeah, I think that the COVID-19 has opened up the awareness of vulnerability uh, on the supply chain. And, uh, and I think that has made people or companies, industries to, uh, to think more carefully what you do, where you source your material. And that also have a very positive effect on the, on the sustainability uh, actions and also the climate. You were nodding here, Matti. Would you like to continue on that? Yeah, I, th I think that you're absolutely right. So, so I, I, basically, I think that uh, people are more more uh, now uh, ready to, to ready to pay attention to to these kind of like uh, let's say nature-related uh, risks that we are witnessing here. So, so I fully agree with what you said. All of your companies operate on a global level. What are the strengths and the weaknesses? of Europe in terms of skills development and innovation when we compare to other regions? Well, once again, a complex question. Maybe if I try to simplify it as much as possible. I think that be being a global company is the benefit that you are, you are able to picking up the weak signals very fast. 
and utilize those ones to strengthen up your center of the core, which is in our case is it in, in Europe. So I think it's, that's absolutely a benefit. Are there any other benefits? Let's Matti kind of continue on this broad question and I will have a little bit time to think what else it could be. Yeah, that is that is a very very difficult question, and basically basically I would say so that uh, we we can uh, we can uh, have many different uh, kind of like ap approaches here, but basically basically uh, uh, I, I guess that uh, broadly speaking we have uh, like a European European market European uh, research uh, uh, sector we have uh, similar in Asia and uh, in, and in the US, and uh, perhaps the question at the end of the day is that uh, are we as Europeans are we hungry enough? Do we, do we work enough uh, in order to, to do those innovations? Are we, are we eager to, to go forward? Okay. Oh, yes. No, thank you, Matti. You open up uh, an other gate. Absolutely big benefit in this European community is that we have a different cultures. And different cultures comes with different languages. And those, has, those typically leads to different thinking. So we have the very good possibilities now to tap on the brains of different European people and nations and, you know, try to take out the best of the rest. And that's a real benefit that you don't have anywhere else in the world. You might have a big pool of people, but they think in the same way. It's a little bit more difficult to go out of the box. That I see uh, as absolutely a good thing. Are we good enough at doing this in Europe? Matti? Well, I, 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 I don't see any reason, reason that why wouldn't, be, would, wouldn't we be. So, so, so I'm surely, surely we are, and we have all the, all the competencies. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, obviously we are global leaders in many sectors. Uh, now, now uh, if we look, uh, look, look uh, in, the, in the near term history, obviously Asia, Asia is very, very strong, uh, for example, uh, Last year, 99.7% uh, of uh, precursors and cathodactive materials were produced in Asia, and that basically tells something about the, the competencies as well now currently. But obviously now, now Europe is co coming or going strong, strongly forward there as well. So that's one of the areas where we can uh, improve. Uh, Rosemary, do you have any other areas where you see that we can become better on a European level together? Uh, speed, <laughs> I would say. Uh, I find that uh, our colleagues in, in Asia, for example, think that we are working uh, slow in, in Europe and they are quicker action on, uh, on things. And I think that is a benefit actually being a global company because you, you get the speed and urgency uh, from Asia and you need to, to act on it. Uh, which I think is, uh, is very good to have that uh, as a close cooperation. Yes. So. But, uh, but, but of course also uh, I think it's uh, uh, to look on the climate, I think it's also an area uh, where we need to work very close to our colleagues in, in Asia. I think that you open up so many boxes here, so it's a little bit dangerous now, but <laughs> but, but, but I would say that uh, you have to divide it to political benefit, economical, technological, decision making, everything on those ones. But something I learned this morning, I was listening to a, a very interesting podcast, was about war warfare. And there is a really kind of different nations are doing it in a different way. We, if you go for, for example, towards very much west or very much east, it's typically based on rules. So you, you have to do this. If it doesn't kind of work, you go to the second. And if that doesn't work, then you have to plan C. And then if that doesn't happen, then you have something else. But that makes the structure many times, it seems that it's working fast, but it doesn't work out from the box. And that's something at least for, for the Nordic countries and I think that many of the European countries in a similar way because when you have a need, you have to develop. You don't have the time to kind of go through the rules. And the very first learning what you have, you are given 
is that think out of the box. So this is basically it's pushed that you can follow these rules, but immediately if, if you have the possibilities to think out of the box, you go there. And this is, I say, it's very good for Europe because of this cultural difference. People have the different points of view to the box directly. And I don't want to go into the economics and politics, etc., because we don't have that time. So out of one of the, the questions from the audience there was that has during the past nine months now during this, this COVID pandemic, has there in your mind been a change in how people perceive the mining industry or the importance of European mining industry? Has there been a change in this kind of thinking in your view in your industries? Well, <laughs> uh, I think that there is, there is uh, kind of like a... Uh, national question in a, in a way at least in, in in Finland the discussion ar around mining industry is very very like a Finland focused and uh, and and uh, and uh, I would say that in that discussion uh, perhaps there has been some uh, voices uh, supporting this let's say local local uh, supply chain and uh, the, the kind of like uh, 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 rise of uh, of uh, sustainable uh, sourcing, but uh, I wouldn't say that the big picture has has changed as such uh, with the with the uh, public public uh, view. Would you like to add on that, Kai? I agree with Martin. Nine months is too short time, but what we can see that the stress, at least from the sustainable point of view, is still increasing, mm -hmm. and totally agree with Matti about this more local supply. Rosemary, you're nodding. Nothing to add, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for, for this discussion. It's been very valuable to have you here presenting at this stakeholder day. And uh, we'll continue being in, in contact also after this. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you.